Hey guys, my name is Matt Kendall. I hope you guys have been having an awesome start to 2023. I know we're about done with January. It's been a pretty hectic month for me in a good way, but I didn't want to leave you guys without a video to start off the new year. So hopefully this video is going to be helpful to you today. So let's get started. If you're someone who has decided to take that leap of faith and wants to start up your very own business in photography or video, first of all, congratulations on your decision. I know that has to be a very exciting experience for you, and it reminds me of the time when I made that decision myself almost five years ago. Now, one of the main things I keep getting asked about and always try to teach everyone that comes to me for advice is to start thinking about having some sort of contract written up to use when you start booking sessions with clients. And full disclosure, everything I'm going to talk to you about in this video is from personal experience. I am not a licensed attorney by any means. So use this video as a guide and go speak to an actual attorney to help you write up a contract. That's gonna work best for you and your business. So why have a contract in the first place? Well, the biggest reason is it's a document that's going to protect you, your business, as well as provide the terms of payment for your services. Now, contracts can only do so much for you depending on how they are written, and I know that there's going to be a variety of answers to the question of, how do I write a contract? Or what should I be putting in my contract? Contracts can be written in various ways, depending on the niche that you're in. For example, if you're a wedding photographer, you'll have a contract that may have specific terms and conditions in there that are going to be different compared to a contract for a videographer filming a music video. And while they're two totally different niches, they have one thing in common. It's a contract that's gonna help protect them, their business, as well as set the terms regarding payment for the service. Now, writing a contract is not as bad as you might think, and I wanna kinda of give you a foundation to work off of so you can start putting together your very own contracts for your photography or videography business. Keep in mind that as you develop your business more and more, you'll find yourself wanting to make adjustments to your contracts as well. A lot of the terms and conditions that I have specified in my own personal contracts are based off of past experiences working in both the photo and video industry, and they are written in my contracts so that what's happened in the past doesn't happen to me again. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and start putting together your very first contract. Now, the first thing I always do before writing up a contract is getting to know as much about what my clients are wanting out of my services. By verbally hearing everything that they are wanting from me, I'll be able to jot down on a notepad a general idea of what my clients want so I can write a very brief yet detailed description of the services I'll be providing in the contract. Now this is where you'll want to ask any detailed questions to your client that you can think of. Examples being if you're a photographer covering a corporate event, how many hours are you going to be hired to stay for, where's the event being held at, what kind of time frame are you expecting to deliver the images. You just want to have any details about the project that you can get out of the client so that you can have a great start to writing a rock solid contract. Once I get the specifics of the project sorted out, this is where I'll begin the conversation about price and payment. After that's been settled, I'll begin to type up the official contract. My contracts are basically two separate pages. The first being an invoice with all the details of the project that we discussed verbally. And the second page covers all the terms and conditions that I require prior to performing the service. The first page has all the specifics. It has the client's name, the date when the services will be performed, as well as locations, times, and information regarding payment. Now the first page is where you really want to make sure that you specify as much about the project as you can, because anything that you leave out in the contract could cost you down the road if something does go wrong. I also like to specify on the first page of my contracts that the down payment and the signed contract are required before I officially book them into my calendar. A big reason I included this was when I first started out, I had several clients wanting to hire me to perform photography or video services. I'd write down the contract for them and they would just completely ignore it altogether. So it left me figuring out whether I should still show up to the event because clearly if they were going to be this difficult to sign a contract, I didn't wanna find out how complicated it was gonna be just to get paid. So bottom line, I tell them verbally as well as in my contracts that if I don't have a down payment as well as a signed contract, 
I'm not gonna show up. I'll try to touch base with them if I haven't received anything back after a while, but if all that fails, I just keep moving forward. Now, the second page is where I list all my terms and conditions that I require the client to understand and agree upon prior to performing the services. Now, you may only have a handful of terms and conditions in your contract, or you may have a few pages worth, but there's no specific number of conditions you have to have in your contract, just enough to protect you, your business, and get paid. As you grow your business, you'll find yourself adding or taking away certain terms and conditions in your contracts. It's just something I'm constantly doing all the time because certain terms and conditions are not always necessary with some of the contracts that I've worked on. But what kind of terms and conditions should you be thinking of having? Here are my top six that I think you need to make sure that you have if you haven't thought of them already for your own contract. The first one I recommend talks about who owns the rights to your photos or videos. Now, obviously you're getting paid to provide a service for somebody else, but you want to be able to specify that you still own the rights to your work and that you can use the content for advertising and publication purposes. In some cases, I've had clients ask for full rights to the work, and if that's the case, I either decide to work with that request or have specific requirements to do, such as be credited for the photos or videos when they use them on social media. The second one I'd recommend talks about liability. Now, this one's important because anything that goes wrong during a photo or video session could be blamed on you if you don't specify it in your contracts. I always state that my business won't be held liable for accidental injuries or damages that occur during a session, and this is just one of those terms and conditions that helps protect you to a certain degree. Again, I would talk to a lawyer about this, but you definitely want to have some form of liability in your contracts. I had this in my contract because I've seen early on in my career when I was filming weddings, people constantly tripping on tripods and lights that were visibly set up in a reception hall. And all it takes is for someone to get hurt. And if you don't have some kind of conditions regarding liability in your contract, they can easily come after you if the damages are severe enough. Again, I totally recommend you talk to an attorney about this, but you definitely need some kind of liability protections in your contract. The third one I recommend talks about cancellation policies. Now, this is a topic that I think many people don't think about early on because they haven't experienced anyone cancel a session with them yet. I always recommend having a non-refundable down payment of at least 30 to 50% of the total amount that the client owes you. The reason for this policy is to help you retain compensation for your time and efforts leading up to the date of the session that you scheduled with the client. There is no reason for you to be spending your time on something that ends up getting canceled altogether. The reality of running a business is that your time counts, and if you spend months preparing work on this project by writing contracts, creating storyboards, or even renting camera equipment for the project, you could end up losing money on your end if the client backs away altogether leading up to the day of the session. I always specify this with my clients before they sign my contracts because I want them to be aware that once they sign and submit a down payment, that money will not be refunded to them if they cancel the session. The fourth one I recommend talks about additional charges. If you're a portrait photographer, for example, that offers one hour portrait sessions and one of your clients decides on spot they want additional hours of coverage from you, you'll want to be able to have some terms and conditions in your contract that specifies additional service charges for extended session times that go beyond your normal time frame. You can also apply this type of policy on revisions to your work as well, because if you have to spend extra time working on a project that you're already completed, you should have some sort of hourly rate in place to make up for the time you'll have to spend working on revisions. Remember that the key with these last two terms and conditions I've mentioned are to help compensate you for extra time and effort you might have to put in that you weren't expecting to do in the first place. The fifth one I recommend talks about the limitations of coverage you're gonna be providing to the client. I see this a lot in the wedding industry, but it can happen in other industries as well, that as a photographer or a videographer, you just can't guarantee that you'll be able to provide coverage for every aspect of a session you've been hired to do. When you are a one-man show covering a wedding, for example, there's only so many things you can do in the time frame that you've been given that day. 
Clients need to be able to understand that while you will do the best you can to provide the coverage for every aspect of a photo or a video session, you just can't guarantee that you'll have coverage for everything the client might want you to capture. This is actually something that has saved me in the past when I've covered corporate events because when you're all on your own covering an event, you just can't be in two places at once. And yes, it might not satisfy the client 100%, I always try to communicate with them at the end of the session what I was able to capture so that they're aware ahead of time before I start the editing process. You can even ask ahead of time to the client for them to write down the most important aspects of the session that they want you to get so that you can at least figure out in your head some sort of game plan the day of the session so you're on your A game. This final one I would recommend to help you get started is gonna be about refund policies. Now, earlier I said you should have a non-refundable down payment for your services, but if for whatever reason you're the one that's unable to fulfill the services you've been hired to do, a full refund of the payments made should be returned to the client, and they need to be able to see that in writing. It's not something we want to do in reality, but it does happen occasionally. So make sure you have this form of policy in place just in case you get sick or you simply can't provide the coverage to the client after all. How many of these terms and conditions do you have already in your contracts? Let me know down in the comments and what else you think is important to have in a photo or video contract. One other thing I wanted to share with you guys in case you're wondering is what's the best way to send clients contracts? I always recommend looking at using sites such as DocuSign or HelloSign, but the program I use is actually Adobe Acrobat. And what's great about Acrobat is once I have the contract written up and converted over to a PDF file, I can tell Acrobat where I want my client to sign and send it directly to their email. From there, Acrobat will notify me once the contract has been signed and I'll have a digital copy waiting in my inbox for me to put on file. And there you go. Those are my six terms and conditions I suggest having in your contracts. And hopefully this gives you a better foundation to writing a contract for your photo or video business. Again, I'd strongly suggest taking a rough draft of your contract to a licensed attorney so they can help you make sure that you have as much protection for your business as possible. Believe me, it's worth the time and they will be able to recommend other terms and conditions depending on your type of photo or video services you plan to offer. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I want to take a moment to make a quick shout out to all you guys who have been supporting this channel the past year. I just hit 400 subscribers on the channel and I can't thank you all enough for this achievement. Thank you so much. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like this video as well as subscribe. I'm going to be coming out with more content on both photography and video very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.